ಸಾಪಕಾಯ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣೆ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣೆ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾ ನಮ ಅಸೋ ಮಾಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮೃತಗಮಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಲೆಟಸ್ ಬೋ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಕಾರ್ನೆಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality today's topic the excellence of self surrender there are so many ways to free ourselves from worries and suffering there are so many methods sometimes we get rid of our mental problems by taking to medication sometimes we get rid of the problems through psychiatric treatment and sometimes some people go for healing touch anyway there are innumerable ways and means of getting oneself free from troubles and worries in life coming to spiritual life one can certainly be free from all these troubling situations and one can certainly be free from worries and tensions if you know how to approach the supreme lord of the universe if you have tremendous faith in the presence of god then certainly you can be free from all the problems sufferings and worries of course you have to struggle very hard you must not have any calculating mind if you have to propitiate god and certainly god will help you in every manner to see how you can march onwards in your life in spite of difficult situations environments you will not be shaken by any of the things 
on the other hand you will be able to march with vigor because you derive tremendous strength since you are connected to the source the divine power you feel the immense presence of god and how god's power is working through you so you will have a tremendous analytical power so that you will not be shaken by external circumstances since you are firmly rooted in god so in one word we can say this as surrendering yourself totally to god of course as i said earlier you must have tremendous faith in the presence of god that's very important that's the basis if you doubt there then you can't expect the result samshyatma vinashyati the person who doubts he destroys himself and it is not simply imagination to believe in god don't conclude that way because all the spiritual masters have emphatically said asserted look you are suffering on account of your ignorance you don't have to suffer in fact every day you can be more and more happy more and more cheerful only your mind must be directed to god whatever you may be doing your mind should be dwelling on god so then everything becomes easy and you enjoy the upward journey it is like climbing the mountain it is an uphill task it is not easy to climb the mountain but you have got energy then you enjoy the climbing that energy is spiritual energy which i am trying to focus upon you so you have to surrender to god you have to take total refuge in him it means you have to be completely free from egoism if you entertain slight idea of agency if you are asserting yourself i am the person responsible for whatever i do why do i need god let me do myself but you are thinking in that way is all right when everything goes well according to what you want to but the problem comes when things go in a different way when you are forced to face the problem and crisis in the life then how do you face them then you must examine yourself whether your egoism helps you in solving the problem you are frantically in search of someone to help you that means you want somebody to come to your help and god's help is the greatest help and you can be assured of god's help by surrendering yourself to god you are not losing anything but you attain everything that's the beauty of surrendering to god you will be able to accomplish things in a very calm way you will be able to think 
without any emotion and take proper steps in order to solve the problems all these things you will be able to get only when you take refuge in god in fact shri ramakrishna has taught us how to pray to god o oh lord i do not know what is good and what is bad for me i am extremely dependent on you grant me what i most need for the spiritual life take me along the path which will lead me to the greatest good give me the faith and strength constantly to remember you and meditate on you this is the way how you should direct your mind you must set your mind in that particular mode then you carry on your activities carry on your duties in the world but always your mind must be dwelling on the supreme lord of the universe so what is needed is you should never be calculating and you should yearn for god seek refuge in him you want nothing but god that should be your goal in the life in order to achieve that goal you are doing all sorts of duties and obligations etc in the world whatever you may be doing the final target is how to see god how to get oneself free from bondage and to enjoy the happiness in life all the practices you undertake worship study japa meditation austerity they are all meant to lead you to take refuge in him the more you engage yourself in spiritual practices the more you feel the importance of taking refuge in god suppose you keep a bowl filled with water somewhere by itself what will happen the water will eventually evaporate but this is not so if the bowl is immersed in the river ganga because the water is always there there is no question of evaporating likewise if you surrender your mind at the feet of the lord what happens is the wind of worldliness will not be able to dry your mind and make them dreary then you find the world no longer seems an unhappy place one of the direct disciples of sri ramakrishna swami ramakrishna anand ji in the course of his uh, teachings he has said the attraction towards the world means egotism attraction towards god means self surrender so the more you come towards god you feel god is taking care of yourself and you become simple like a child and you depend on god like the child depends on its mother and it is totally secured in the protection of the mother so you feel totally secured in god lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita 
सर्वधर्मान् परित्यज्य मामेकं शरणं व्रज अहं त्वा सर्व पापेभ्यो मोक्षयिष्यामि माशुचः relinquish all dharmas take refuge in me alone i will liberate you from all sins don't grieve any more these are the words said by lord krishna of all the spiritual disciplines surrendering oneself to god is supremely great it is easy to get him through surrendering oneself when you perform your duties various duties you have no doubt you will get the results thereby undoubtedly performance of duties will give you some merit so that you may enjoy greater happiness but they are temporary if you surrender to god you will give you will be given liberation from all bondage and be in supreme happiness when you are giving your whole being to god that means you are not bound by any obligations or duties of the world but you will be happy in doing uh, work for the sake of god and lord says mamekam sharanam vraja take refuge in me that is the supreme god he is telling if you pour water to the roots of the tree all the branches twigs and leaves and flowers get the water so if you surrender to god you will get everything that's the meaning of surrendering to supreme lord there is another point to be noted here if you get into various activities and ways mind gets divided in number of ways and in number of things so it is most beneficial to hold on to one alone the so god should be the central focus knowing which you will know everything hearing which there remains nothing to be heard getting which you obtain everything that is parmatman the supreme god the supreme self it is the universal self the self of all if you take refuge in that supreme self that is the greatest accomplishment that the lord has assured aham tva sarva pape bhyo moksha ishyami i will release you from all the sins committed by you knowingly or unknowingly because you are constantly tormented by your actions by the results of the actions which you have done you are constantly under botheration so lord krishna assures अनर्थ अर्थ अत्यंत निवृत्ति परमानंद प्राप्ति दट ईज यू विल गेट लिबरेशन एंड ऑल युवर सिंस आर डिस्ट्रॉयड टोटली दे विल नॉट हैव एनी इफेक्ट ऑन यू यू विल नॉट बी ड्रॉन इन टू द डॉक्टर ऑफ कर्म because you have surrendered yourself to god you will not get into any kind of material results but liberation the final result of spiritual life 
So, sin brings you misery and suffering, whereas righteous life brings happiness. Through knowledge you get liberation. That's possible only when you totally surrender to the Lord. What is the meaning of total surrendering? That means you must be free from ego or the ego must be totally subdued. That's the meaning. And the Lord has said, relinquish all the dharmas, sarva dharman parityajya. So, this particular phrase you have to understand in a proper way. What is sarva dharman parityajya? You know, deha, prana, manas, buddhi, ahankar, body, vital forces, mind, intellect, you go, all these have their own set of actions. They must be abandoned. That means, what is the meaning of that? Don't identify with them. If you identify with the activities of uh, this uh, body, mind, etc., you will be constantly in trouble. And, for example, the prana dharma, that is, it always aspires to eat something, to drink something, to satisfy every now and then. And, uh, the dharma of the manas is it is constantly under the sway of uh, sukha dukkha. This time it is happy, next time it is unhappy. And the dharma of the intellect is kartratva bhoktratva. I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, this kind of feeling. And ahankar, the attitude that I am doing everything myself, which is the cause for all the uh, misfortunes, sarva anartha karana. So, you have to dissociate with all this, with this kind of functioning. Concentrate upon parabrahman only, that's the meaning of telling, mamekam sharanam vraja. So, if you have taken refuge in the Lord, you must know that you have surrendered himself to him and that Lord has accepted you. You must have that feeling. This is all that you need be aware of. You need know nothing else. Sri Ramakrishna gives the example of kitten in order to explain the function of self-surrendering. Kitten, it knows only its mother. Wherever its mother places him, it is contented. And the mother cat puts the kitten sometimes in the kitchen, sometimes on the floor, sometimes on the bed. When it suffers, it cries only mew mew. It only calls for its mother. That's all it knows. But as soon as the mother hears the cry, wherever she may be, she comes to the kitten. So, Sri Ramakrishna is suggesting you must be like a kitten. You must cry for God. God hears your cry. If you are sincere in your crying, you are crying will be answered immediately. God cannot keep himself away. Because there is a famous story in Mahabharata which you are all aware of, how Draupadi was in terrible crisis when she was forcibly drawn into the court in front of all the uh, dignitaries who were sitting there, Duryodhana and others, 
and uh, the pandavas all the important people have assembled there in that great assembly and all the people were watching the situation in a very tense mood this lady was possibly drawn pushed as it were into the court room and one of the persons one of the kauravas dushasan wanted to humiliate her he tried to disrobe her to remove her cloth in front of all the people that was too much and she felt extremely uh, worried and she was in terrible distress in that situation she just remembered lord krishna and she cried literally oh lord please help me modesty please help and her concentration was so perfect her crying was so sincere and she had tremendous faith in lord krishna she knew very well that he would protect her in every situation and that proved her sincerity proved cuz lord krishna was not visible there in his body form but his power worked even though dushasan wanted to disrobe her he could not do it but the more he pulls the sari of the lady the more it comes so that's the example of how she was saved in that terrible situation so there is another story this are all very famous uh, stories in our literature to focus our attention on surrender there is another story of uh, the king elephant of course the king elephant in its previous birth he was a great king and uh, when he was a great king he was a great devotee of lord vishnu and he worshiped him very devotedly and even gods appreciated his love towards god and they were all giving tremendous respect to him and he felt he was spiritually uplifted but then a small very small mistake he did and that was when agastya rishi one of the saptarshis when he went to visit this king he was in the worship room of course he had just finished the worship he was about to get up he should have got up and received the maharshi but he didn't do that that's a weakness sometimes weakness comes you know disastrous weakness and somehow he pretended to be in meditation he did not get up to receive the rishi but the rishi was gyanapurush he could know he could read and he found he that king had developed a sense of ego which is not good for a person who wants spiritual illumination so he immediately tells well it's not good for you to be in this way it's your duty as a king to receive the guest with full honors and treat him properly you are in the position of a king people will follow you if you don't perform your uh, function properly people also will do in their own 
way, that's not good. So you have to get rid of this uh, egoism, which is the cause of your botheration, which is the cause of your diversion from your righteous path. So you will have to be born as an elephant. Elephant is known for its uh, egoism. It's proud of its power. It's very proud. So, uh, finally, that king had to be born as the elephant. And uh, elephant, it was very majestic. The whole forest he was uh, roaming about with a group of she-elephants and he was a male elephant. And every day he would go with this group to take to drink water in the river there. Once he went there, it so happened the its leg was caught by the crocodile. And he was so boastful of his energy, he tried to just push its leg with a force, but even then he could not lift its leg from the water. It was struggling and struggling. All the other uh, she-elephants were watching on the shore. And this uh, elephant is not able to come out of the water because it's constantly being pulled by the crocodile. Because the crocodile is a very strong animal in the water. And uh, probably it was hungry. Finally he got this elephant, so he wanted to grab. So he's... Uh, pulling and pulling and uh, the elephant wants to push himself out so the tug of war going on and how long can it go like that and finally it was becoming very weak weak and weak it was almost on the point of collapse just at that point of crisis, it's a, it's a point of crisis, maximum crisis. Just at that moment, it remembered its past life. He remembered in his past life, he was a great king and he was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. And he was very good in worshipping God and meditating on Him. And why he get into this state of elephant on account of uh, uh, the Agastya Maharshi's pronouncement because he could not uh, receive him properly. All these things in a moment it flashed into its mind. Then immediately because he had so much merit you know whole life he had spent in his previous life in worshipping God he was very good no doubt about that. And he began to pray to Lord Vishnu, Oh Lord, please take me to you, yourself. I am in a very helpless position. It is you only to protect me. You are my everything. So, the king elephant began to cry, cry in prayer. That prayer is very famous. It is in Mahabharata. Even today people, uh, as a part of spiritual practice, they do chant this Gajendra Stotra every day. Gajendra Stotra, Vishnu Sahasram, all these things they keep chanting. They are all considered very meritorious. They have got purifying effect. And finally, Lord Himself came, released this uh, elephant from the clutches of the crocodile. So, these are all the examples of how self-surrender helps you in all situations. But you have to be sincere and as I said in the beginning, you must have a tremendous faith in the presence of God. It is true, you will have no leisure, you will have to do many things in the world, That means you are preoccupied in so many things. You are constantly under some stress and strain. 
So, it is not a very easy thing to come to God, to do this, that, etc. Though it looks easy, but when you try to practice it, it becomes so difficult for you. So what should be done? Is there no way, no hope? But again Sri Ramakrishna suggests a way. He tells you, well, if you are so much preoccupied and so, uh, so much involved, what you should do? Well, then give, the God, give God the power of attorney. Power of attorney. If a man entrusts his affairs to a good person, he will not do any harm to you. So with all sincerity of your heart, resign yourself to God and drive all your worries out of your mind. Do whatever duties you have been assigned to do. Keep doing the things. And as I said earlier, Sri Ramakrishna says, the kitten doesn't have a calculating mind, it only cries, mew mew. It lies in the kitchen contentedly, if the mother cat leaves it there, and only calls the mother crying mew mew, whenever it wants something. It has the same feeling of contentment when the mother cat puts it on the soft bed of the master of the house. It only cries for its mother. Sri Ramakrishna has uh, said in the gospel, two things are necessary for the realization of God. One is faith in God. And the second one is self-surrender. And uh, he explains this giving remarkable examples. A father, he was once passing through a field with his two little children. He was carrying the younger one in his arms while the older one was walking along with the father holding his hand. They were walking and on their way they saw a kite flying. The boy who was holding father's hand gave up his hold of his father's hand and he began to clap with joy. And he shouted, look Papa, how beautiful, there is a kite there. But immediately he stumbled down and got hurt. Because he was holding father's hand while walking. The boy who was carried by father, he also clapped his hands with joy. But he did not fall because his father was uh, holding him in his hands. That's the point. It's a very significant example. The boy who was holding father's hand represents self-help in spiritual matters and the boy who was carried by his father represents self-surrender. The boy who was holding father's hand represents self-help in spiritual matters and the boy who was carried by his father represents self-surrender. It's remarkable. There's another instance which is also recorded in the Gospel. You know, Radha, Krishna. Radha was very devoted to Lord Krishna and uh, Radha was very pure, immaculate purity she was perfectly modest and everybody knew Lord Krishna loved Radha and so once she was called to prove her chastity she was subjected to the ordeal of fetching water in a jar with number of holes 
Radha did not doubt anything. She succeeded in doing so with not even a drop of water leaking out and every one applauded her declaring that such a chaste woman never was and never will be. At this Radha exclaimed, Why do you praising me? Say rather, glory to Krishna, glory to him alone. I am only a handmaid of his. So her surrender to Lord Krishna was total. So how things go, you can very well understand. Another example is given. Live here like a leaf cast off after being used for taking food. It is at the mercy of the winds. It is blown here and there, sometimes indoors and sometimes abroad in dirty places. Well, no, you are placed here. It's all right. Remain here as long as you have to be here. And when God will take you away and put you in a better place, then too you should say Amen and resign to God's will with perfect unattachment. Let things take care of themselves. Sri Ramakrishna has said in the Gospel, God has put you in the world, what can you do about it? Resign everything to Him. Surrender yourself at his feet. Then there will be no more confusion. Then you will realize that it is God who does everything. It is God who does everything. All depends on the will of Rama. Then Sri Ramakrishna himself narrates the story of the will of Rama. It's a very uh, fine story to explain this point. In a certain village there was a weaver. He was a very pious man. All the people trusted him and they all loved him because they were all convinced about his sincerity. And this weaver, what he would do, he used to sell his goods in the marketplace. When a customer came to him and asked for the price of the cloth, the weaver would say, by the will of Rama, the price of the yarn is one rupee and the labor four annas. By the will of Rama, the profit is two annas. The price of the cloth by the will of Rama is one rupee and six annas. So he was explaining everything in a very simple way, in a straightforward way, so that people know how much profit he is getting. And naturally, people would uh, love to buy things from him. The weaver was a real devotee of God. Everything he was he was on a, he firmly believed that it was the will of Rama. So what he would do after finishing his supper in the evening, he would spend long hours in worship. He would meditate on God, he would chant his name, he would sing God's glories. One night, the weaver could not get sleep in the night. He was sitting in the he was sitting in the worship room and just thinking about God because he was not getting sleep. Then suddenly a band of robbers they happened to pass that way. They wanted a person to carry their goods so they found this man is awake, he was not sleeping. So they came to him and they forced him to 
come with them. So they took him away by force. You know the robbers, they committed the robbery in a house and they put a load of uh, things on the weaver's head and they ordered him to carry them. And they were about to take him to their place. Just then the police arrived. Seeing the police, the robbers ran away. But here is a man with a load on his head and the police thought he was also one of the thieves. So he was arrested. He was taken to lock up, put him in jail one night. Next day he was brought before the magistrate for trial. The villagers came to know, they were all shocked to hear about it. They all came to the court and uh, they were pleading to the magistrate about the sincerity of this person and they were all telling he could never commit a robbery. Then what the magistrate did was he uh, asked the weaver to make a statement. And then he, the weaver began to say, By the will of Rama I had been thinking of God and chanting his name and glories. When by the will of Rama a band of robbers passed that way. By the will of Rama they dragged me with them. By the will of Rama they committed a robbery in a house. And by the will of Rama they put a load on my head. Just then by the will of Rama the police arrived. And by the will of Rama I was arrested. Then by the will of Rama, the police kept me in the lockup for the night. And this morning, by the will of Rama, I have been brought before your honor. So, every time he was uttering the will of Rama, and he was narrating the whole incident in graphic detail, and the magistrate realized that this weaver was a good man, so he ordered his release. On his way, the weaver said to his friends, By the will of Rama, I have been released. So the whole thing is done in such a way, he, he is very definite about that. Everything is by the will of God. He has nothing to do about the things. He has no control over the things. So, Sri Ramakrishna said, surrender everything to God and do your duties in the world. You have to do the duties in the world as long as you live in the world. There is no question about that. But the point is, dwell on God, think of God and then do the things. It has got good effect. So man is too often afraid to surrender. He thinks he will lose something, but he is never a loser when he gives himself absolutely to the Lord. Only when he is guided by God does he cease to blunder, because then God works through his hands, he sees through his eyes, he speaks with his tongue, and he becomes a perfect instrument in the hands of God. So God's power will manifest thoroughly in you when you totally surrender to Him. So that means that person is directed by God in everything. The man who acts on his own responsibility is sure to make mistakes. But the man who surrenders everything to God always acts wisely. Tulsi Das, a famous uh, devotee, and a saint, he says that the Lord himself fulfills the desire of one who takes refuge in him. For instance, the fish that has the shelter in water can swim even against the current while an elephant is washed away by it. So one must surrender oneself likewise. There is another story this also comes in sayings of Sri Ramakrishna. 
One day at Mount Kailas, Lord Shiva and Parvati, they were playing. You know the play of dice. They were engaging in that play. Suddenly, Lord Shiva left the place in the midst of the game and he went out. But he returned immediately, probably within a minute or so. And Parvati was surprised. She asked him the reason for the sudden going away and returning immediately. What was the matter? And Lord Shiva said, Well, a devotee, he was in trouble. Some robbers attacked him. So, when he was in the trouble, that devotee, he took refuge in me. He was uttering my name and he was calling me for help. But before I reached this part, I found that the devotee had himself taken up a stone to throw at the robbers. So, when I saw that he himself is taking action, why should I intervene? So I came back. So, Lord's grace does not manifest itself unless one absolutely resigns oneself to him. So, let God do what he thinks best. True resignation comes only after hard struggle. Only when the wings are tired does a bird sit on the mast of a ship to rest. Swami Brahmanandaji, one of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, said, Offer yourself body and soul to the Lord. Give yourself entirely to Him. Say to Him, I give myself body and soul to you, O Lord. Do with me what you will. I am your servant, ready to serve you to the best of my ability. If you can really do this, the responsibility for your spiritual well-being rests with him. But this resignation should be inspired by the right spirit and faith. No doubt must enter your heart. It is no use taking the name of God to cross the river and at the same time raising your cloth to keep it dry. Now this excellence of self-surrender is very nicely exhibited in the story of Rama, the Ramayana. There's a particular Sanskrit word for this surrender. It's called Sharanagati. It's also called in the Vaishnava scriptures as Prapatti. Both mean the same. So if you study Ramayana, the story of Rama, you find in every section how this act of self-surrender is exhibited very clearly. Now to begin with, first comes the Balkanda. You know how the all the gods in the heavens, they were in great trouble because the, the demon Ravan was giving a lot of troubles to the people and was tormenting. So they all went to Lord Vishnu, they surrendered to him. Well, we are all being humiliated by Ravan. Oh Lord, you should come and protect us. There is no way. We have all come to plead to you. We are surrendering to you. Our powers will not work here. You will have to come to take care of that demon Ravan. And so you find Lord Vishnu accepted their prayer and he incarnated as Rama to remove their sufferings. So how the act of self-surrender made Lord Vishnu to incarnate as Rama. Coming to Ayodhya Kanda, Bharat was greatly pained to see that 
Sri Ramachandra was to go to the forest and he loved Rama very much. He could not stay a moment without Rama. So he went to the forest to meet Sri Ramachandra and what he did was he went and caught hold of his feet and he surrendered to him and he said brother you want me to rule the kingdom that can never happen that can never happen I am totally surrendered to you you are the person to rule the kingdom and you should rule no one else but you there is no doubt about this and I have no powers to rule the kingdom my power is in you you should come and do it finally Rama had to accept his uh, act of surrendering so he granted him his wooden slippers and assured him that he would return to Ayodhya after 14 years so up to 14 years Bharat was ruling Ayodhya worshipping the feet of Ramachandra every time he would hold the court meeting in front of uh, the wooden sandals of Sri Ramachandra it was a living presence to Bharat coming to Aranyakanda when they heard Sri Ramachandra has come to the forest all the rishis they became very happy to see that Lord has come finally to help them so they all went in a group they surrendered to him and they prayed to him to protect them from the torture of these uh, uh, demons who are constantly troubling them and Sri Ramachandra granted them fearlessness, Abhaya he granted them next comes Kishkinda Khanda here also how the act of self surrender is depicted it is very nicely written there Sugriva Sugriva and Wali they were brothers and Sugriva was in great trouble and he surrenders to Sri Ramachandra and Sri Ramachandra grants fearlessness to him he kills Wali gets back the kingdom to Sugriva and so his life became blessed afterwards coming to Sundar Khanda there was a person he was the son of Indra he assumed the body of a crow they call it as Kakasura he came and he hurt Sita Sri Ramachandra coming to know of this he strikes him by a blade of grass charged with special power and Kakasur could not save his life in any part of the universe he went in all directions to protect himself but the missile would chase him wherever he went finally that crow it came and surrendered to Sri Ramachandra but then Sri Ramachandra forgave he did not kill him instead only his left eye was taken out by the missile then Trijata describes her dream to the Rakshasis they were all frightened Trijata tells those Rakshasis to surrender to Sita if they have to save their life then comes Yuddhakanda where Vibhishan the brother of Ravan he was terribly humiliated by 
Ravan and he became very sad. He left the place and he came to Sri Ramachandra. He surrendered to him. And then after Ravan was killed, Sri Ramachandra made Vibhishana the king of the Lanka. So you find the whole story of Ramayana is full of instances where this act of self-surrender is depicted very thoroughly. So the path of surrender releases you from all the sins and makes you to achieve liberation. That's why Srimad Ramayana is called as Moksha Shastra. It's also called as Sharanagata Shastra. That is the great story of Sri Ramachandra. So, it may not be possible for to do uh, any rigorous spiritual practices for us, but at least it should be possible for us to surrender ourselves in a helpless way to God. Oh God, please save us and protect us from all crises. And if you have this simple faith and do conduct yourself properly, then you will achieve very good results. But the point is, what is needed is, you have to be thoroughly established in character. That's very important. Telling you have surrendered to God, at the same time if you indulge yourself in all sorts of illegal things, then the meaning of self-surrender is destroyed. No. You should never lose your moral ground. That's very important. Moral ground is the basis of your life. Based on that, you follow any spiritual path, you achieve the goal. With these words, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bhunakto Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastoma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om May the Divine Spirit protect us, guide us, give us strength and right understanding. May we not hate one another. May love and harmony be with us all. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. May the Divine Lord protect us. May He nourish us. May we work in harmony with great vigor. May our study be illuminating and fruitful. May we not hate each other. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.